Hi everybody, welcome to episode 32. Uh, you might have noticed that we've gone over the 5,000 subscribers that we showed you last week. So this week, me and Ed will pick somebody at random. Um, and we'll give away that £500. So we're now we're halfway to giving the little Fiat Panda 100 horsepower away. Because that's going to be on 10,000 subscribers. Hopefully we'll get there sooner rather than later. Um, it is quarter three on Monday. So not quite the end of the day yet, but the lads are probably a little bit of wind down. We'll head through to the workshop, see what's happening there, and then we'll show you a little bit of progress of what's happened in the bike room. Let's go. Ed just walked straight into the door. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Boom. Right, we'll head through the, the bike room first, see what's happening there. Right, so strip back some more of the um, extra little bits of panels and stuff like that to plen them off. So basically I'll come round this side. The old wiring harness is there. So get rid of that horrible, nasty, original thing. Obviously if you've got a standard bike, that harness will do you absolutely no problem at all. But on this one with it being supercharged, it just is not the right thing for the job, especially now technology's moved on a long way since 2000. Um, so at the weekend there, I did come in, did a little bit of work when there was nobody in. Um, ACU's all mounted, we've got the boost pipe uh, is in. The harness is all clipped up to pretty much where it wants to be. Obviously what we'll do is we'll make this harness in basically a rough form. Then we'll basically sleeve it so it's got a really nice protection on it. So that is that stuff there. So basically you put your wiring harness into here and that just gives a really nice finish. A bit of heat shrink on the end to terminate it and then we'll put the plug on. Once the plug's on, obviously that's the harness pretty much tied in finished there now. So all we need to make sure that on every sensor we have got the, um, the signal, an earth and a, like a, you get a reference voltage. So you get a signal ground, a 5 volt and you get the, the actual sensor wire itself. So I've been rooting in some of the wires to get started. So basically these wires here are all tied together because that is your main live for your injectors. And then these four here, cylinder one, two, three, and four. So there's all that to snip off. Because obviously there's not many, um, these ECUs are used on cars as well. So <coughs> this normally you see mounted either on the bulkhead or in the, in the glove box area. And this harness will have to reach all the way to those injectors on a car. So I basically tied them off there because I know that that'll be getting terminated the right length. Then the sleeve will go on. And then we'll terminate using some new plugs. And that'll be that all done. Same on here. So that there's a the plastic pipe. That measures how much boost in the motor. Hopefully that'll be a lot. Um, then we've also got these wires here. So same again, one, two, three, four. And they're for your coils. Um, this here is for your cam sensor and we've got your main ground which is bolts to the block somewhere we'll just bolt that probably to the back of the start motor where the main earth is anyway um, coolant temperature sensor and we've also got a gear position sensor um, I think I went through the other day we'll be changing the O2 sensor to this one here so this is the Bosch O2 sensor or Lambda sensor that is um, a wide band so that's the one that's sort of mated to this um, ECU. So then you've got all your wiring basically down here. I've just basically been putting them into little packs of what's going to go together. And these here, all the greens are like an output. So what we'll do is use that output. So when we push the shift button, that'll send the output to that solenoid. That'll kill the ignition for us and change gear without us having to do it. Pull the clutch in, lift the gear, let the clutch out, all that sort of stuff. Um, so once all the engine harness is done, we're going to build a very, very small extra harness which will basically run your rear light and your tail light. Um, there is no front light, there's no indicators on this bike. We won't even have a rear brake switch on it. We'll literally just have a front brake switch and we will be using a clutch switch because we'll use that for the launch control. So basically if it's in first gear, so that once the ECU sees first gear and sees the clutch pulled in, once we open full throttle, That'll just probably keep that at about 8,000 uh, RPM and that'll set a limit there. Once we let go of the clutch, that'll know that'll give us full power. So, 
And then that's the last but not least is this wire here. That's a pair of can lines. So that speedo, I really wanted to keep that speedo, but unfortunately it won't give us everything we need uh, to know. So I think we're going to be changing it out for an iPad mini. Um, so we'll run a CAN bus line up and we'll run a live and earth up to keep the iPad charged. The CAN wire will be there just in case we need to change that dash out to a, a different one if we find something a bit tricker. Because um, the problem with iPads are that they're not amazing in the direct sunlight. So if the sunlight's hitting that iPad, we might not be able to see the rev counter, which is definitely what we need to see. Um, and we're going to keep that. Um, that's literally just a, a hazard one that will be on the back of a truck. But it's a really bright LED light, so that's our shift light. As soon as we see that, we know to push that and change up a gear. So we've run the car line in just for future reference, just in case we're going to change our dashboard out to something else. Um, I do normally typically like, I like analog gauges like that. They just seem a lot more easier to use, but I'm going to change it for uh, an iPad. Really just to get the bike up and run as quick as possible. Once we're happy with it, we're going to change it out because we've already put the wiring in. Um, so that's all I've got on here. Um, got this 2018 BMW M4. This was originally in for um, front pads and discs and oil change. So basically, it must have been somewhere else to get some wheel spaces fitted. The bolts weren't quite long enough. And when they tightened them up on the passenger side, it's actually stripped the threads out of the hub. That hub wouldn't um, retap or anything. So we've advised the customer that needs a new. Uh, basically new hub with the bearing, comes complete as one piece bolt in unit. Um, so even though this customer is obviously living the champagne life, he's got a lemonade budget because he doesn't want to do that. So he's actually going to have the car taken away with only three or four wheel studs in rather than the five, which I think is absolutely crazy. Really, really nice spec car. Um, it's got a lot of options in this, it's a compact car. Nice bits of carbon trims. Um, like a lot of these and like mine, the back tyres are worn down next to the limiters and he doesn't want the he doesn't want to go ahead with the work that's needed on the passenger side front hub. A couple of gaskets waiting for this now, now I've got to go ahead and put it back together. Hopefully this will be going back together this week. What's Andy Pandy doing? Hello there. Just done a little time and belt job. And he's just put a time belt and a water pump on this little Yeti. Um, <clears throat> it's also get a full service. Health checked? Yep, all good. Good to go? Good to go. Right, that's the world's biggest dish. Right. Um, you've just missed, um, you've literally just missed Paul working on the G-Wagon. It's a rare thing, but... Oh, he's not, we haven't missed him. Oh, I thought we'd missed you. Just in the corner. Paul's just having a little cat nap there on the driver's floor. Callum's on with this little A1, came in for MOT. I think it failed on front and rear discs and pads. They were pretty bad. So there's your, the disc there. Not the best, there's not much left of it. Pads pretty much down the metal as well. So some pads all around and something else I believe what's this getting Carl a tire as well which tires again uh, oh. right just getting a tire just some pads all around and then it'll get retested off uh, Andy this afternoon this see it something what's this called a tier or something is it Shed it here. This is getting distant pads on the front only. Uh, I think we're picking up a couple of extra things on the health check, but the customer's just going to get that done for now and see if we can get some more done later on. Oh, hey, Michael. Hello there. Michael's just built up all this um, front end off the guy who crashed it. So the new bottom arms on, drop links on, um, tie rod, tractor end. The drive shaft's all been rebuilt because we couldn't actually get one there on back order at the moment. Um, this is all ready to go apart from this uh, inner arch to go in there at. 
that's probably the worst thing to fit ever that has never fit um, and there's also a, like a piece of trim missing here so we'll just bend that bit of bracket back out um, there's trim there look there it is just there look do you want me to give you a hand fit this mate Oi. look at that so that'll go in there unfortunately that looks absolutely brand new and that's not painted me is it that needs painted let's have a little look shall we mickey says grey i see red ah oh, michael it's red, red. it is that's primed so that lead we might actually leave that trim off then to be honest with you and we'll get this uh we'll get that paint and then we'll put that back on later on i'm gonna paint it blue michael to match the match the to match the car. <laughs> um, so, Mickey will mechanically get this all done, put this trim in, and let's literally just put that, um, put that on once it's been painted. This Mini, we've got most of the parts here, but one of the parts apparently is just being put on the back order, which seems like the most common thing at the plant at the moment. As soon as you ask the dealer for a part, straight on a back order, you can't seem to get nothing. Um, once this is done, Eddie B, will you make it through here? Dun, 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 dun. Um, this Vavaro slash it's at a camp, I think. This was in for MOT. This passed its MOT, but was also getting a full service. Um, Ken's literally just finishing that off, putting the fuel filler out and see there. I think the rest of it's all done and good to go. Um, I'm literally going to head out with Andy now on a recovery just because it's going to be a little bit awkward trying to get this Ranger off someone's drive, especially when he's by himself. Um, we'll catch you tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be before I close the play. Thanks very much for watching. See you tomorrow. Hi, welcome back to Tuesday with Team Valley MOT. Um, been a really busy day today. I think it's getting towards. Not the end of the day, but it's quarter to four. Um, we did want to get something done a little bit before that, but it just didn't go away. Too much in the workshop. Ed's got a lot on upstairs. So it is what it is. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is had a, 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 bit, a good and a bad phone call today. So it was about um, a previous video we did. The guy's maybe he's watching this video now. It was basically, uh, we had a car in, we spoke about his, um, maybe it's the look of his car, and I'd basically said that I just didn't like the look of it. But you, what you got to remember about this channel is it's literally, if it comes out of my mouth, it's only my opinion. If it comes out of Ed's mouth, it's just his opinion. Something I don't like, Ed might like. Jim, if we like it, Jim probably doesn't like it. But you know, we've got we've all got different cars, we've all got different tastes. Um, and if I say something isn't I don't like it then that's just that's just my opinion doesn't mean it's a bad thing or a bad car or a good car or a bad or a good design it literally is just because um that's what I think about on the day maybe he's that body kit 10 years ago I probably would have been claiming over over that like a tramp on chips I would have loved it I would have probably thought that was the best thing in the world my taste moves on slightly um some people say probably not for the better, but it is my taste anyway. Um, so I still, I'll still stand by my word, <clears throat> and that's basically what I explained to the guy. And when I did explain it to the guy, he was fine about it. He, he knew what I meant. That's my opinion. You've all got your own opinion, and obviously we want to see your opinion in the comments. That's what the comments are for. If I say I don't like X, Y, Z, I don't like that mini, I don't like that car there, whatever, but I do like this, and you don't then start talking about it in the comments. Give us, some, uh, give us something to bounce off, you know what I mean? We're, we're happy to talk about it. We love cars, love bikes. We're happy to talk about them all day long. Um, I'll head through the workshop. We've just got a couple of big deliveries and I think for either cars that are happening today or over the next couple of days. Um, we'll walk through the workshop and see what's going on there. Oh, that's busy, Jimmy. <laughs> that's good. That's good out here, Jimmy. 
again. What's happening? I'm just waiting to come back out here and I'm going to go and prep that Celine's Rangy. Ah! And that M2 there. Always busy. Always busy. This one all done? Yes, I just put it on that gross top. Splendid. Sorry, come on, come on down, contestant number one. Um, there's not much to see here. He's done it all. Um, and he's put a clutch and flywheel. Aye. And he's put a clutch and flywheel in this. It's mega common for these exhaust clamps to rot away. That had happened on this car, so we basically just cut off the excess bit of old clamp. Just wait on an exhaust clamp for here. Um, I think the rest of the car is pretty much good to go. Clutch and flywheel, and if it's all sorted, and we'll stick that exhaust clamp on, and we'll get that customer back on the road um, today. Another clutch and flywheel, fly, can't even talk. Another clutch and flywheel, even, is this one over here. Aha. You cannot escape us, Callum. No. What's a crack? Uh, it's been at a switch. Uh, and then nearly finished, just not believe it. Nearly finished? Yes. These, we've done a, a clutch on these before. They're a strange looking thing. I think this one's a Fiat based one, so it's a Fiat Doblo. Aye. So it's a Fiat Doblo with this weird looking milk floaty back on it. To me, I think the, so this car's only got, or the van, sorry, it's only got about 20,000 miles on it. It definitely hasn't got 30,000 on, but it do, go through clutches um, about 25,000 mile which is, seems ridiculously low mileage for a clutch to go especially on a van that's fairly new but the the dealer obviously know and we know <coughs> all they do is the milk float is literally stop start stop start all day all night I've left this garage at 10 o'clock at night and one of these things has passed me on the motorway full of the brim of milk um, heading down towards Durham so the obviously a non-stop thing um, this van is a 71 plate it's just under 30k, needs a clutch, so I know that this is probably coming in again for about 60k miles. Um, it'll get another clutch. Hopefully, um, the drivers might come up with some sort of technique to keep the clutches in them a little bit longer, but I doubt it. This is um, A6 All Road. This is basically going to get um, the gearbox taken out quite a big task because some of the bolts if I remember rightly under here so there's bolts of the bell housing down here are held you can't get to them because the turbo is there I'm pretty sure it's this model um, but Michael who's doing the job will tell you better gearbox out gearbox needs to go in for repair um, so we've ordered it's a DSG so we've ordered a clutch pack for it and also some replacement solenoids which are stuck this is the third or fourth Eco Boom, uh, one litre that we've had in. This one's got oil pressure problems so that will obviously lead to um, probably explosion like they normally do. I think this will either get um, check, make sure that the oil pressure switch is all right. I think that oil pressure switch will be telling the truth and it's got low oil pressure because it's quite common. And this will end up with possibly a new engine. Um, sometimes the engines aren't worth repairing because you wouldn't want to stick a warranty on that engine because of the, the fact that they're not the best to start with. Big Schmeichel. How do you, young sir? All back together. Just ready to drive out. Test drive, mate. Four chain test drive. Test drive. <laughs> it's a nice looking dash, that's it, the contemporary look. That's the modern, mate. Modern. Michael's just putting on this, um, putting this back together. I'll close the door so Ed can get straight in there with his camera. Come on in, contestant number three. So he's put all this main structure back in and there's the two little control units there that he's changed. Um, obviously you've got that mammoth of wiring. That's all for you, your dashboard, your radio, that sort of stuff. This is a left hand, right hand drive car. <laughs> you just choose what you want. Mate, there's a two box all super clean. Hey, I'll tell you what it is, that's better than it was, apart from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Michael, two. Well, why, two then. why I got 12 screwdrivers out? Because it's me different variations, you know what I mean? Might as well get them out. Go ahead, just take the tray with you. Yeah. Um, Michael, your toolbox isn't too bad today. Oh, uh, Michael. Is that yours, Michael? No, no, it's not. It is. It is yours. It really is. 
Well, did you bring it in from home? Yeah. No, you didn't. I did. Right, this is blue point. It's mine. And a little black there. That's my broken spanner. That is a broken spanner. I'll give you that one. These two boxes look in. Well, to be honest, it looks like he's been in everybody else's box and took. No, no, they're mine as well. I'm Do you want socket? Do you want? I would process. No one mm -hmm. would have here on the front porch. They've got silver lines. Of course. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, tiny bit of progress in the bike room. So this little scooter, um, this, um, this is actually MOT and tax exempt, but the guy still wants like a, an MOT of sorts done. So basically just to give us a bit more room, I'm gonna get this done. Um, this should be bolted to the back box. This is all pretty slack. I think it's just, um, and that there, probably, I don't think you should be able to take that wheel off like that, and to be fair, I don't think that'd be very good if you broke down because the tire's flat. But we'll get a quick uh, look over. I think with a good kick, I think it'll start it. Oof. She's got a little bit of compression about her. Easy. Um, on this, I've spent another, probably only 45 minutes on the wiring. Um, so I don't know if I explained basically that these coils are, um, if you look into it, anyway, these are a, a two-wire coil. So I'll pull one of these out. There's one I prepared earlier. So if you look there, there's only two um, connectors on that one there. So these basically haven't got their own igniter built in. So then you get one of these. So this is a cheap, nasty Chinese version of what I want, but I needed, uh, I can't get one from Bosch basically. Um, they're on back order until the end of March, but this will get the bike running. Um, it'll certainly get it idling. And it means I can mount it, because I know the Bosch one is exactly the same size, has the same plugs. So it means I can get the wiring done, terminate all the harness perfectly. And all I've got to do is unplug these two here, take them bolts out and just replace it with the Bosch unit. I'm not saying that this wouldn't last, maybe it would, but I really don't want any sort of um, inferior, shall we say, products on this bike. I spent way too much time, effort, and uh, money on this engine for it to go pop for the sake of a 150 pound part. Um, so this part here, I bought, that's basically the Bosch version, not of that one. So this would basically run this bike in what they call wasted spark. So that would fire one and four and two and three at the same time. Um, that's not what I want. This one will actually do it. This will fire each individual spark plug at the same time. Benefits, to be honest with you, are probably very little. But I know that if I run it, um, they're all separate, then it'll be perfect. So I did buy them. So if you do need one of them, just put some in the comments. I'll send you that for free. Genuine Bosch. And there's another one there for that bike. Um... The only thing that we need to do as well on this, while it's in bits, is we need to change this um, caliper and change the front calipers for the Hell versions. I think if we look in here, Hell have been uh, really good to us and they always do us an amazing deal on our brakes. So I'm pretty sure in here are some of the parts that we need. So that's all your, your brake lines, they're all made up. So yep, the FHSR 1300. Um, in here. So these products are unbelievable, amazing um, quality. So they're all billet. You've always got the Hell logo there. And they're adjustable for the amount of spine you've got in your hand. Um, you've got your little remote reservoir. Just plugs it in there. You also bleed the more cylinder from there as well. And that's where your pressure pipe goes in. Nice little touch with the red H there for hell. Um, so that is the lever kit that we'll be using. Obviously brake and clutch lever. And somewhere in here, I'm assuming that's another one. In here somewhere, this one here possibly. Yeah. 
so that there's the rear brake that's an absolute work of art you can see there the lovely machine marks I like to see all that if I buy anything that's billet I want to see it I don't want to see it all polished off so it looks just cast and finished I really like seeing all the machine marks on it so that basically is your back brake replacement so that cart was actually slightly small on that one but it'll be a lot more efficient obviously times have moved on a lot this bike's 2000 that would be the original caliber um, I think in here somewhere we'll also have a front caliper the front caliper was really nice as well so this one is a different color back one so they did send us both colors um, so we we're going to make a choice and send the ones that we didn't want back but now we've actually made a choice to keep them all because um, hell do us an amazing deal um, it obviously isn't for that bike because that one's if you look has already got hell calipers front and rear and it's got the hell lines on it but what we'll do is use these calipers on our j6r 1100 um, so I spoke about that bike before that bike was bought the same time as I was born um, so I'm assuming somewhere in here that would possibly be hell definitely does a good deal they've sent us a lot of gear um, and they also send you ABC pads to match your calipers at the same time so in here is There's your front calipers there. That is absolutely work of art, amazing. Tells you in the back there, manufactured by Health Performance, made in England. You've got your serial number on there. That there is some motorcycle pawn there. So you obviously get a pair for the other, one for the side and one for the rear. Right, that's all I've got for you today. I might even get a little bit worked on the bike this afternoon. Thanks for watching, see you later. Hi everybody, welcome to Wednesday's uh, part of this week's video. I've ended up pretty dirty today because I've spent most of the day in the workshop. Um, just been pretty busy, not overloaded I would say the dairy, but dairy was definitely full to the brim. Um, so today, Andy's uh, give this little scooter a good going over, so he's give it a service as much as he can do to something as um, simple as this, I would say. But all the side panels are off, basically checked everything, drained the fuel, put new fuel in. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but this yesterday was like flopping all over the place. There was a couple of bolts missing down here in that wheel. Not only was the tyre flat, but now it's obviously blown up. But this little securing bracket here, it all fell apart. So that's perfect now and even the man's little rack works so that'll go back to him just wants a quick wave down because i think it was pretty clean when it come in but now it's a bit dusty um and he's also trying to spend a little bit of time on this one this one's slightly newer um he's going to spend a bit of time on this and then that screen smashed so that needs to go onto there the customer also wants us painted but that's not something we would take on um it's just not our thing getting stuff painted like that we've got the rally car painted um but we wouldn't do anything else there's some parts arrived for the high boost that day some electrical parts so it should be to get some more work done that the, over the weekend um paul's brought his mini in for a late night mot because it's quarter past six at night but he's brought it at night we'll get that mot for him um not sure if i'll pass a fair light but We'll give it a good go. This Ford Ranger is the Ford Ranger that would fit the can Phantom of the day, but it used to have like a normal back on it. Um, but Paul's just fitted and wired all this tailgate in. So it's got three opening sides, all central locking on every side. Oh, Paul's just polishing it there. Polishing your one's turd. Getting rid of the fingerprints. Um, it's not stolen, you know. That's the old. Um, this is the old part. So if you have got one of them and you want to go back to one of these, which is the big over the back airframe thing with the brake light in, then send us a message and we'll know that I'll put you in contact with the, the guy whose that is. He'll want rid of that. Um, there's the 
like a roller blind. So if you're a midget and you need a, a roller shutter door for your garage, perfect. Callum, where are you going, mate? Home. Car's quarter past six at night. The party's just getting started, mate. Uh, this came in for MOT last thing tonight and unfortunately uh, that failed that's what's left of the brake pad so that's actually just down to the metal so I'll get the rear pads and discs done in the morning uh, luckily the caliper wasn't seized or anything like that also failed on a CV boot on one of the sides anyway and we'll have to check what the airbag fault is because that's on the dash as well um, We're still waiting for some parts for this A6. Uh, they're on the mysterious back order, same as every other part on the planet. So that's getting... Gary, come here. Gary's behind the camera trying to ask a question, using sign language. I was, I was just talk, wondering. Gary. I was just wondering why, why Jim was following you in, that's all. Jim's a sound guy? Or is he a... He's so, not, yeah, he's he's not he's no. He's, he's not a sound guy, no. Yeah. He's got his bag in hand, he's ready to go. Yeah. That's probably why he doesn't want to go because he's got his girl's bag. <laughs> Jim and the man bag. Yeah, Jim and the man bag. Waiting on parts for this, they're on back order as usual from. Um, La not Landro, it's always Landro on back order from, but it's not, it's Audi this time. Uh, the RS6 has come back in. That were basically had the motor out. Um, no panic, actually, nothing wrong with it. We just wanted it to be dro driven by the customer with no under trays on to make sure there's no leaks, no nothing like that. They're over the moon. There's no, <coughs> excuse me, there's no leaks, no nothing. So in the morning, all this will get is under trays back on and then uh, he four back to the customer. Paul's been on with the G-Vag on. Um, so he's got the door stripped down at the minute. It's a bit dark over here. Um, so he's, that's the wiring he's got sorted for the, the power folding mirrors and the adjustment on the mirrors. He's also got the window taped up because the two front windows are really slow to go up and down. Um, they must slow now. They must slow now. Just, now we're just going to weld that in so that's just, that doesn't go up and down at all. Um, so there's a couple of broken wires in here. They were for the door lock. He's fixed all that. Um, but the, the motor, we've got two set hand motors because you can't actually buy the motors for these particular doors anymore. So we've got two motors we took a chance on and they're actually nothing like the ones we've got, they look very similar, but once we strip them down, the gearbox is wrong. So I'm not sure which way Paul's going to go with it, um, but I know I'm going to come this way. So, a couple of things that we've got over here. Delivery off worth, um, decent quality consumables worth, but you definitely pay the price. Um, in this box here, which we haven't opened yet, I'm hoping, there's a, this should be an engine for the transit outside. Brand new crate motor from Ford. The big block. It is, yes. Yeah, we'll just lift it straight out so you can see what it is. The only thing I can lift out of this is the dipstick. There's, there's Jumbo there, look. <laughs> what a dipstick, Harrison. So, Brand new motor from Ford. Um, it doesn't come with a lot, to be honest with you. It's obviously, it's got all the timing gear on, engine mount, crank pulley on this side. Um, see you later, Callum. Yeah. It's got the oil cooler, brand new oil filter. I think that is about it. Um, there's not a lot. Oh, there's a vacuum pump there. But you can see, end plate's on. It's all timed up, ready to go. But very, very, very little on there. Uh, it's actually still here, but I think that's in for some time next week, so we should get a little bit of footage of that going back together. It's shocking, really, that van only had 40, um, I remember rightly, had 43,000 mile on. Let's hope the engine's as good quality as this box. It'll last longer than 43k. Right, so last job of the day is this TDV8. So quite, no, I wouldn't say quite rare, but it's definitely the better spec of the Range Rover Sport, the TDV8. 
so I don't know if Andy's left us with a torch or not. Andy goes through a lot of torches, because what happens is Andy buys a torch, I can't find my torch which someone else has got, so I take Andy's torch, then I lose Andy's torch, and Andy's got to buy a new torch. That's a lot of torches. Um, so that basically was the problem. So we've done a very similar job on that Discovery 3, which was the um, oil cooler. So that's that job there. Obviously, you can see top of the motor is all stripped down. Um, and as a, as a, in the course of that job, we always replace the thermostat housing as well, which is this here. So pretty common. That pipe there was just starting to crack. A little, little sign of a weep under here. When we've touched it there, it's just snapped off. You can see a little leak around that bottom o-ring and also the top of here, a really, really fragile little pipe, um, which is that one there. I'm not sure if that one, yep. So that there is snapped off and there is the other side of it. So that would normally sit in there like that and that pipe goes there. But every time you touch these, because obviously you've got hot coolant run through all day, then it goes cold, hot and cold. I remember that car is probably a 2014 plate. As soon as you touch it, that snaps. The next thing is, that snaps. So that this whole unit here was on back order, but we've managed to source that pipe by itself. Um, so we'll basically put this new unit on. There. So that comes with all new O-rings, all new gaskets. That'll go on tomorrow with a new pipe, that one there. And there is the leak off the old oil cooler. So you can see it's actually, it's wet above all of the gasket surfaces. So it's actually the bottom corner of this um, aluminium block here that's been leaking. And there is the inlet manifold. So you've got your four inlets. Then your throttle flap on the front here. Um, and then obviously engine cover, just to make that nice and tidy under there. These are really common for spinning in the shell. So remember these are a one piece shell, you, you can't, not like that rain drawer there where you take the body off. Um, this one's just one piece. So you take these arms off, which is basically just like a strip brace. That goes back to the bulkhead. They always end up spinning in there. So you end up just taking out what you can and moving them out the way and then get a nip on them on the way back down. Um, that's pretty much all we've got on this car and it's definitely all we've got for you today. Can I lose that torch? Thanks very much for watching on Wednesday. We'll see you Thursday. Cheers. What's happening, G? Yeah. Go, sorry, what's happening? Um, well, it's um, it's it's fairly um, fairly relaxed, surprisingly enough. Um, the, the the challenges I, I feel are overcame. Um, however, um, yes, we are just in the uh, in the midst of midst of the throws. Hmm. Mm, yes. How was, oh, our, oh, how was our film? Oh, oh, hold on, hang on a minute. Oh, oh filming like. Oh, I didn't tell us that. Oh, how was God, I didn't see Ed there. <laughs> um, um, no, uh, pretty well with the milk. Uh, deer's gone well. Uh, just waiting for a couple of prices to come back. How was our um, friend with the uh, Mercedes? Which one? A class. Um, uh, Gary's special friend. Sorry. Yeah, we've got what we're seeing. Of course. Um, well, uh, so he's not taking it down south now. Uh, it's just like engine out of it. Um, and engine services are going to be built for him. Huh. Well, he will do that. Well, I thought that. Um, when, he, when he said that. Which so, depends on the block's cracked. I know. I, as much as I, I was thinking that, the only thing I was thinking was that it probably, because of it's been so hot, um, Probably best if they rebuild it. So what you're saying is put the onus on somebody else. Not that. It's just it needs it needs checking properly. I mean, because obviously it's been that hot, so we need to check the block, not just the head, but the block. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather they rebuild the engine and we put the uh, peripherals back on. I mean, because the turbo's new. How long um, do you think it'll be at end of service for them? Um, that's that's going to be the thing. Cause it's going to have to keep us as, as rolling shell. Um, so got to take the crane I don't know, I don't know. Um probably need to speak to engine services and see see what where they're at before we get out and, and leave it a, a mobile. Sound? 
Andrew has a question. Yes. Oh. No problem at all. Gary. I will hop for a clue. Need a pipe. Oh no. Andrew's just given us some very bad news. Oh here. no. Do we by any chance not have them upstairs? Nah. No, I remember on a, a TV at Vogan, it would to buy like that much hoses. I remember we just took literally one hose off, that's all we need. I, don't, I think it was like all, all small ball across the front of the rad pack. So basically, this is a TDV8 um, that was in for. It was in for a water pump, thermostat housing, and an oil cooler. But it was basically on the front of that um, thermostat housing, there's two big in and out hoses there. <coughs> Just put the water through the block. So one of those hoses on the way off has got a tiny little hairline crack. Yeah, we could probably get away with it, but that's not the kind of thing we do. So we're just gonna um, get the part numbers off the hose and see what we can find, see if we can get one. We might get one for tomorrow if we order it quick enough. I'm looking there, there's nothing there, nothing. Um, we may get it quick enough. If not, then we'll uh, we'll look at Plan B. Um, so that's there, where those hoses are going. Basically, two big, big ball hoses. Schmeichel. Michael's just on with building the top of this engine back up again before the body goes back on. Uh, he's got both inlets on. Removed all the injectors, cleaned them down, put them in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, He's now just putting on the, the bracket for the fuel reel. There's quite a bit, I would say another four or five hours of work around top of here before I start lowering the body back on. Um, before the body goes back on, mate, I just need you to check the handbrake, make sure that when that come up, it didn't pull the pin. No, so we'll just you, push them I back, push them back what together. Maybe? What's the matter, Gary? Uh, the man's last. The man oh, is last. Come on, Gary, what you, what you playing at, man? Like tax. Right, so this is Paul's old um, old work van from his previous job. So it came in because when you turn the ignition on, basically that was the first fault. Anyway, we turned it on. The wipers was constantly going. Headlights wouldn't work. Um, there's the headlights working all right there now. Basically, there's a body control module that everything goes through. I don't think the windows worked either. I think they work now. Yeah, perfect. So the body control module, um, there was a little bit of water ingress. I'm not quite sure if it was that or it was just a fact that I just gave up the ghost. So that sorted all of those problems. There was maybe 10 or 15 electrical problems, all went through the same module. That's all sorted now. Um, the, the thing it went to another garage for in the first place was the fact that there was a clutch problem. So basically you were just going for the clutch, the clutch pedal would go to the floor. But as soon as you lifted it back up again, it was all right for another couple of hours. And then it would repeat and repeat and repeat. Other garage had it for quite a long time. I don't think it was other garage's problem. I think it was just one of these faults that sometimes you just, it's hard to get the bottom of. Believe it or not, like we get exactly the same kind of thing. You get a fault and you just can't find it. You just seem to be chasing, chasing, chasing. But in the end, we'd normally get there. But I'm not saying every time that we do. Um, this is probably, I, th I think this is the biggest sprint that you can buy at the moment. This is like a jumbo, long wheelbase, massive thing um, with an extra, like, it's an extra, extra roof on it so you can stand up um, in that van, no bother. This is in for front and rear pads, the exhaust flexi, which is really common on these. So if you start to smell fumes in the cab, the exhaust flexi is probably split. Um, the thought it had a little oil leak, but it's not, it's actually a coolant leak. Um, once on your driveway, it will feel a bit slimy and greasy coolant. So the water pump's leaking, um, and there's a couple of marker lights on the side and a bulb on the front. Off, but we'll get them sorted. And around this corner, this little Mini Cooper S. S. Uh, this is in for a Diag. I think the management light's on, and the guy said he's changed the spark plugs twice last year. Quite a few things go wrong with these. Um, I think you would have seen one on ramp two in one of our videos. We done a head, we did a head gasket. Um, for, it was actually a burnt out valve, so this could be something similar, and that's why it's found the spark plugs. But we'll put a diagram, see how it goes. 
Callum's doing a turbo on this Peugeot Boxer. I know he's doing a turbo because we've already fit a turbo to this. But unfortunately, um, whether it was our fault, someone else's fault, don't know, but the, it was basically a pipe um, for the turbo return pipe. That had a little split in it. I think it, maybe it's got a bit of debris in it. Anyway, the turbo has just shot itself. So let's get another one. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it looks nice and tight in there. Oh, it is. I'll tell you one thing, the bolts should come off all right. <laughs> They're just being done. So, Carl's on with that, I would say, for the rest of the day. Um, Astra is in for, we've just replaced this exhaust section here. So basically the, the clamp had fell apart. So you got the clamp there. And I was, was going to just replace the clamp, but when we took it off, you can see it's all, there's bits of holes in there. So that doesn't actually look too old, believe it or not, it's still got the, the sticker on it. Um, we've just replaced it with a, a similar thing new clamp and managed to save the back box as well this was in for MOT yesterday customers actually was advised on two front tyres they're pretty close you know they're maybe about 2.5 to 3 mil not something that I would want to drive on um, in the winter so that customer's authorised two front tyres to get done that's why it's just the front's being jacked up um, and these are the wheels these are 22 inch wheels um, and these are to go, believe it or not, onto the red Range Rover Evogue that had a bit of an accident and we've done all the suspension repair. Um, I'd, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen 22s on a Evogue. That, that will, well, it's got to affect the driving somehow because I've never seen Evogue with 22s on, but I think it would be the wheels are nearly as big as the car and when we did fit them up close to the car um, it was really close to the arches but the suspension was hanging down so once we get them on we'll see if we can get them on later today and we might be able to show you what it looked like on tomorrow's video um, I mean nice looking wheel they're either I think they're either brand new yeah definitely brand new brand new tyres there these came off a Range Rover Velar which has got a slightly bigger body shell but we'll give it a go um, oh, excuse me. Oh, set of tyres here. Um, there's two for the little Fiat, two for a van, and two for a car coming tomorrow. We've got so coming in normally on what's on the part shelves, a good thing to see what's coming in soon. So, there's a basically all these parts here. So, we've got four new injectors. Um, clutch cylinder, turbo pipes, the brand new turbo there, clutch and flywheel, plus the bolt kit back there, and the service kit, all that is for that Ford Transit. So we wouldn't just we wouldn't want to just replace um, with all the old gear. Yeah, I know it's, the van has done a lot of miles, but I would like to just start from fresh, so we know that that van has basically got zero miles on it on the engine. Get them all done. We'll also while it's in while it's in bits, we'll check all the, the bearings of the gearbox, all fresh oils and lubricants there as well. Um, steering rack, that's just come in for a little Citroen C3, I think. Gary would be better, better at doing this because he orders all the parts, but I'll give it a go. We've got probably six or seven service kits there, discs and pads for a Range Rover. Uh, exhaust here, got absolutely no idea what that is. Looks like a Drive shaft of some sort, handbrake cables. That there is the turbo for Callum. So that can go on there. And that's the pipe. That's the offending pipe apparently. So something happened to this pipe anyway. And basically it, it didn't do the turbo any good. So obviously that's getting fitted under warranty free of charge. Um, we've got a service kit there for a little M Coupe. And then I keep forgetting to turn my phone off. Um, what else have we got? Two tyres there, they were originally for the Evogue, but let's say now that's getting new wheels. I think, I think, I think. Oh, my, well, my car was in for this afternoon to get them done, but then we've ended up so busy that my car's been put on the back burner. So I think those tyres are going to end up probably sitting there till the summer, um, but I will definitely get them on one day. And 
if you're in the northeast, you'll know that it's snowing at the moment, so the M4 is not the car I want to be bringing out in the snow. I'll have a quick look outside Ed, see what's there. So we've got this, we recovered this yesterday, transit tipper. This is for clutch and flywheel. Guy just bought it one day ago in the clutch and flywheel went, so a bit of a sick now, but we'll get them back on the road. Everything on this line here is all done, ready to go. Um, the transit's there ready for the engine to come in. And there's also a, a new gear selector module for the uh, Rainbow of Vogue that we're collecting on the back of the recovery truck. That's at the end of death row. Somebody actually stole that. There's a black transit custom on the back of the truck. Somebody stole that and the police managed to get it back luckily. So it's came in at us from, uh, from the police. We're going to put a new ignition barrel on, get all that fixed for the, uh, for the lady. And she's going to get a can phantom fitted. Um, ironically, it was booked in to get a can phantom fitted. Um, and she wanted it done later on. I think she had some, a lot of work on basically at the time. But in that time, somebody actually managed to get to it and steal it. So, but now we've obviously brought forward her appointment to, as soon as possible to get a can phantom fitted. Um, I can't show you a can phantom. Because obviously I showed you then it sort of gives away the, uh, what to look for. But I can basically tell you that that's my microphone pack there. And the can phantom's actually smaller than that. Um, but the technology in it is obviously what, you, what you're paying for, I would suppose. So um, with can phantom, you've got to remember if you, you fit it, then you keep your car. It's simple as that. So you're not a statistic like that woman was there. I mean, she's been really, really lucky that they found that van. and had no tracker, no extra security. Um, and it's, it obviously went missing and it went missing really quick after she bought it um, she had both the keys um, and they've just they managed to take it with no keys, no nothing I don't think they've even done any damage to the door so they've obviously got somewhere getting in they've stole that vehicle and it was parked up somewhere and luckily someone um, someone noticed it and I think they looked untoward so they've, they've called the police so well done obviously for getting that back but they couldn't have took it in the first place if they had a can fit of it so I'm also going to ring this customer here because we, when we spoke to the police, they said there's been, I think there's something like 60 transits a week go missing um, and that's what they don't get back. So the police obviously do a good job in getting cars back, but they can't do a job like the can phantom where it just stops them in the tracks. Remember, if your car's got a can phantom, your van's got a can phantom and your alarm's going crazy and they can't get that car away, they will literally they'll move on to the next one and luckily they'll leave yours where it should be. Thanks very much for watching today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Hi everybody, welcome to Friday, the final day of this week's episode. Um, we've picked a winner for the £500 giveaway, but we'll tell you that in a minute. Um, we need to quickly head through the workshop, lots of things going on. Uh, me and Ed have got to go, uh, well, we've got places to be anyway. So we're going to quickly wrap this up. We'll take you through the workshop and see what's happening today. Right, so to be quick, the Parker Tiles van that's had um, service done, two front tyres, uh, brakes done and also two injector seals. This taxi's just fighting us all the way, trying to teach in the, um, the DSG clutch, but I think we've sorted that now. What are you doing here, son? He's just putting new, four new injectors into this car. Um, they were split actually on the body, it was leaking diesel. Strange thing, doesn't, not, doesn't happen a lot. Um, Paul's having a mission with this Range Rover Vogue. He's got all the console and everything out. Basically we've changed, where's the old bit? So, that's a part that Paul's been changing really common part to go wrong so basically that gets stuck um, it normally gets stuck into drive or into reverse and then when you switch a car off that's supposed to go back down that's not been happening with this one um, eventually believe it or not the M4 got its tyres so it looks like it's on still stick it's just come off the ramp look at that big arch gap there so eventually got the brand new tyres on. This 
Stern van, this is absolutely huge, huge, huge van. Look at the size of that. Unbelievable. I can't even reach the roof. Huge. That would make an awesome camper van. Um, that's just had the water pump done after I done a couple of bits and bobs last night. And also exhaust flexi done. The Range Rover, it's running, the body's back on. Let's have a quick. You alright Michael? Aye, not bad like. Good. Good. It's running like a dream. She's purring like a kitten. Purring like a kitten, he says. That body's back on, that'll get finished over the weekend, hopefully. Um, I'm not even sure where the old, there's the old tyres there. So the old tyres off the M4, front ones weren't too bad, but they're basically just peeling the edges off there. So there's the front ones, but the back ones, obviously where they normally take a bit of hammering. You can see they're literally just on the legal limit there before I changed them out. I think I left it a bit too late, really. But it's done now. I'd like to put a couple of changes on that camera, possibly. But it's sunny, sunny. Um, this is the 4.4 V8 that was out uh, for the oil cooling and everything. That's all done. Running sweet as a nut. A couple of little, little other things down here. Um, I think we'll get somebody in over the weekend to get rid of some of this backlog because it's just getting busier and busier every day here. That's the same as our M Coupe, but it's not ours. That's Martin, um, a good customer of ours. He wants some new suspension all around and that. that obviously, the age of them cars do get pretty tired. Um, so the winner of the 500 pound, and I even have your money here for you, sir. This is all yours. Please come and get it. And it's all about cars. Yay! That's the name of the channel. Um, if you could give us uh, an email or a call, um, email to YouTube at teamvalleymot.co.uk or you can call the front office and they'll put you through to me. Um, we'll just want some verification and make sure it's your channel and we just can't wait to send you that money. Um, Ed is going to Portugal literally as soon as this camera is back on the floor he's heading to Portugal um, so he will be back until Tuesday so unfortunately Monday and Tuesday you're going to be stuck with me and James. Um, whether that goes well or not I have no idea but thank you very much for watching this week's video I hope you enjoy your £500 when you get it uh, all about Cars UK Hope you spend it wisely. We'll see you next week. And you can remember, 10,000 subscribers, you win that little Fiat Panda. Thanks very much. Cheers.